Let me take this thing off my screen and we'll start our breathing. All right. So let's dip down, take a breath from the earth and bring it up. Opening. Expanding. And extending out through the walls. Let's do our containment breath. And let's begin to move from center of our abdomen. And enjoy the key flowing out through our arms and fingertips. It's light, it's shining on the walls. Inviting some key up from the earth and down from the heavens. And without any effort, let's invite a little more to come through. A little brighter, a little stronger. Okay, and let's bring that to a close and just stand in it for a moment, sensing the key flowing around us and through us. And let's stretch our sides a little bit. And all the stretch in our low back. And hips. And knees. Stretching the back of the knees and if you're comfortable, the fronts. And again. Okay, let's do our hand warm ups, starting with Ikea. And let's settle down, lengthen up strong hips and open our hearts. And other side. And Kurgaish. Softening around the stretch. And Nikio. And 
inside the arms. And let's shake them out. And let them fall. And again. And let them fall. In big circles, the arms, and the shoulders. And then let's work our core a little bit. Okay, big triangle. Finding the point extending way out through the wall, imagining this in the sides, opening our backs. Let's invite Aiki spirit to flow through us as we move together and back. Together and back. Together and back. And having a sense that we're made of stardust, we could be hollow. We still want to shape the space, organize the space. Find the point where your triangle extends to. Imagine the sides extending way behind us. And our backs are open and we can let the key flow through us. Imagine it's imbued with wisdom, compassion confidence, and we can be noble, awesome, and shiny, and have joyful perseverance. Two more, and then let's just hold for a moment and stand in it. See if you can still sense the triangle, sense it flowing through you, the key, out into the world. Nice, let's go back to the circle with the two set. And one, two, one, two. As we turn, sensing the space is filled with key. Maybe it feels like or senses like stardust and it moves us effortlessly. And we can open our feet and invite key up from the earth. Invite it from the heavens, flowing out our fingertips. And the space connects us to all things. And the space is filled with energy and life force and key. Two more. And now let's turn and stay. And just stand in it for a moment. See if you can sense the key flowing around us and through us. Okay, um, I want to do the rowing, but before, before we do the rowing, just do a few um, passes of this, just to get the, uh, let everything drain out of. When I do this, it really drains out of my shoulders. And remember, take the weight out of our feet, take the weight out of our body. And then just hold for a minute. And try to sense that we're very strong, but we're also weightless. All right, given that, let's do some rowing and just see what that's like. So take the weight out of our body, out of our feet, and we're gonna row, extend out and gather back. In relaxed power. Unification, what is that? Finding the point you're extending to, gathering it back. Feeling the key all around us. What's it like to be unified?
two more. Okay, now let's take some key from the sky, bring it down, vibrate our abdomen. Imagine a point in the center of it. Imagine it gets smaller and smaller and it suddenly opens out into the universe inside of us. And then stop, see if you can sense the vibration continuing, sense of universe expanding. Okay, let's reset and do the other side. And extending out and gathering back, keeping the weight out of our body. What's it like to be unified? Letting the key around us work the movement. Two more. Okay, one more time, let's reach up. Bring the key down from heaven, focus it into our abdomen, imagine a point there. Imagine the point is vibrating and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it opens out into an expanding universe. and stop the shaking and see if you can just sense the vibration and the expanding universe continuing to open. Okay. So, hi everybody, glad you're here. Uh, what is unification? That's what came to me with this. Um, I'll say a few things and then open it up to your thoughts. Um, the internet says that unification is the process of being united or made whole. And then some thoughts I have about Uke and Nage are one, the dojo and everyone in it become one, mind, body, and spirit become one. And then I, I just, what came up was um, splits. When we're split, and um, that's an aspect of not being unified. Um, when we, of course, our mind wants one thing and our heart wants another, that's a split. Also, if we go into our observer and watch ourselves, um, that's a split. That creates a subject object. So the subject is watching the object. Um, now I'm just going to read something from my teacher, Trungpa Rinpoche, <laughs> and you know, he was very edgy. So if it doesn't make any sense, that's fine. Experience involves a sense of duality. You have an experience and you relate with that experience. You relate with it as something separate. There is a separation between you and your experience. You are dealing with a subject matter, experience. Okay, there's some more, but I'm gonna stop there and just um, check in to see uh, if you looked at the title, uh, any thoughts that you have on unification or lack thereof. Just looking for some clarity around this. We've been talking a lot about weightlessness and in the past few classes and being in the space. And it, there's a kind of implication about unification in that, the stardust deal. Um, so I thought it would be interesting to unpack it from the point of view of this lens. So any of you have any thoughts on unification or separation, <laughs> which is the opposite of unification? If you 
got the yin yang thing going on there. All right. So this is, <laughs> this is a lot what uh, inspires me when I think of unification that, um, you know, of course this is like a two dimensional picture but it's actually an infinitude and um, everything is there. And yet it's also showing that there's the kind of the duality that Trungpa Rinpoche was pointing to, yeah. like everything, <laughs> everything is there. So I like that it's not words also, because mm. <laughs> words get me more into, you know, distinctions and separation, whereas this is just like, here it is. <laughs> nice where, where does that take us? Paul um, recently gave me a yin yang dragon. There's two dragons and they've got the yin yang thing going on. A nice combination of dragon and the yin yang. And then also that um, Do, I keep Do is the, the Tao, right? So that there it is also in the name of our art. Yes. The Tao is pointed to. Well, and it's also the way or the path. And some people say the path is the goal. There's a whole Zen thing around goal and path. <laughs> Pretty esoteric. Any other thoughts? Thank you, Michelle. Mm -hmm. I'll just say that um, during warm-ups today, I don't know why this came up, but um, Last fall, I went and did the, a bioluminescence trip. And so, you know, you're paddling through the water and just all of these flickering lights just start happening. And so that whole idea is I'm moving, it's like oh, I'm moving through the water and there's always this potential there, but it doesn't actually show until there's a disturbance. And, but then it all goes back to nothing, <laughs> the whole. And then you do some movement and then it shows up and then it <laughs> comes down. So there's something about that. <laughs> I like it. I like that sparkly image of that. Yeah, Sensei, the um, union or unification, it reminds me of like learning not that long ago that that's the, the definition of yoga is is union. And then if you look into it deeper, it's like, I don't remember all the details, but it's different parts of yourself coming into alignment. Right. And then I liked another philosopher who was talking about, you can even think of different parts of yourself as different personality types. And we all know this because like, if you're hungry, that's a different personality within you. Right. Or if you're in pain, it's another personality. So to have all the different parts of yourself kind of in harmony and working together is a little bit of finding that union. Nice, very nice, thank you. Another thing that occurred to me as we were um, doing the, um, the rowing exercise is that when I'm in one place, kind of like, one place in myself, then I'm equally in relationship with everything around me. But when I'm split, then everything around me from my perception is a little cattywampus as well. So I don't know, that was just something that kind of surfaced up. That, that reminds me of this, um, this is more Trump Rinpoche quote, but um, we have to realize that there is a sense of energy that is always there. And that energy contains totality. That energy is not dualistic or interdependent. It is a self-existing energy, which I thought was pretty cool. I mean, it's sort of Einstein's, you know, there's only, there's a finite amount of energy and it just organizes in different places, different times, different ways. But, and the energy itself, is, um, I like he says, contains totality. Yeah, that definitely points to what I was experiencing. And we're very caught, um, from, my, from my keto point of view, um, I've been for many years talking about um, 
finding an alternative to focusing on uke. Because when we focus on uke, it implies separation. Even when we say we should blend, that implies separation. Like getting together implies we're not together. So you've heard me say, you know, taking the attitude we're already blended and we act as if that's true rather than we make a blend or we do the blend. Um, so just from that point of view of um, sort of uke nage, let's, uh, let's, let's do a little exercise and we'll just play with it and then check in afterward. So um, imagine the Kodagaish, you know, um, ski and we're going to um, blend with it. And then we're gonna go around and just start the movement. So, you know, it's, you imagine your partner's there and you turn and blend and you take the wrist and you do a code of age. Just some kind of very fundamental form. Form is not that important. Um, but what I wanna do is I want us to do it with the observer first. I want us to create a split and see what that's like to watch ourselves do it. With a sense of that, that's okay, this is me and I'm watching myself do the movement. So <clears throat> here's what I'm gonna invite you to do is do about four of those like left, right, left, right. Then see if you can shift and don't focus on the imaginary uke. Focus on the space around uke. You still imagine uke is coming in and you're not paying attention to uke. You're starting to pay attention more to the space or the form that's creating it. So we'll just do that contrast. So do four with it. And then just, if we have time, do a second round of going back to the observer separating from uke and then focusing on the space where you're imagining that you're not focusing on uke because uke is just like a part of your hand. Okay, so let's just try that for a minute and see what happens when we make the contrast. Can you do a couple more, just finish up whatever set you're on. Okay, let's check in. I'm curious what you notice the difference between having an observer and watching yourself and seeing UK versus not focusing on UK. And how do you do that?
Well, this is going to sound a little weird, but <laughs> you, you heard about artists talking about negative space, which is just as important as the main content. Yes. So I, I thought about the uke being the main content and everything around it being the negative space, which is equally important in, you know, the artist realm. And when I did that, um, I guess I felt more unification if that's, I, I felt more connected to everything as a whole. There, there wasn't me, there wasn't a them, and there wasn't the space necessarily. It was just kind of a whole picture, like a painting. Like if you step back and you just looked at the painting as a whole and just took that in. That's what it felt like, like a whole. I, sorry, that's the best. No, thing. no, I, I love the analogy, and I know what you're pointing to. I think because of the depth of your time as an artist, it's more vivid for you than it would be for certainly for me. But, but and I know I see exactly what you're pointing to. Oh, good. <laughs> I, no, it's, I mean, I, I can relate to that, the negative space and the positive space, and they have those and you can, little memes yeah. where you look at the negative space, it looks like a bird, the positive space looks like a woman or something. And, and, and what really makes it more vivid, probably for me, is I'm in the middle of reworking a painting that I wasn't happy with the background. The foreground is the figure that is central. It's like, it's like having a close-up uke right in front of you is the figure and I'm reworking the background and the impact and the change is, is just so amazing. You know, and you can, you can change a background and change the whole dynamic of a piece in 15 minutes, you know, just working and changing color values and it gets to be really fun. And then you're pushing and pulling color, but you have to constantly step back. It's like back forth, back forth and check for unity. Because if you don't have the unity, the piece just falls apart. And so when you were talking about unification, all I could think about was the unity of color and how that has to balance in all its shapes and size and um, color value. So that's I, it. I, I love it. And you know, it might be really a fun thing for you to bring to the mat is to visualize, depending on the UK, what would be the accompanying color that you would need hmm. to create unity in that moment with that particular UK. Interesting. Or, or the intensity of the color or something that you might, that might be a way you, you could help yourself get your attention off of UK as the attacker coming at you per se. Yeah, I could, do, I could, I, I, I will try that. Thank you. That sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. I love the way you describe it too. It's very, very intense. The, your your description of it. Thank you. Lula. Any other thoughts on what it was like to contrast okay separate versus being unified? With the contrast, I became aware that when I was putting my attention on uke. I was very frontal and my perception of them was very frontal. And um, by contrast, when I had my attention on the space, it, it was like a hologram kind of opened up <laughs> and there was so much um, richness and dimensionality to me and to my partner and we were being held. <laughs> Mm. Um, so there was also, um, I don't know, like a, a feeling of relaxation compared to like, mm, you know, me, the, the duality tension. Yeah. And then as I practice more, this was kind of a new experience, Sensei, with the space, then I felt, oh, I felt the space inside me. Nice. I, my porousness became part of the space. And so there was also not a separation there of, oh, there's the space and then there's me, but I was a part of the space. So that was pretty exciting. That's great. I think that's the kind of thing that we want to, if we glimpse it, we want to cultivate a little more of that 
Yeah, so I'm glad that that showed up for me because it really feels like, ooh, how to invite that more. And yeah. um, the porousness that you <laughs> tell us about so often, it's like, yeah, more. I have a more vivid experience now of that. Thank you. Nice, thank you. And say between the, um, the one where I was thinking of the third sort of out of body experience or somebody myself watching the technique unfold, there was definitely more thoughts of judgment and a little bit, I can notice a bit more wobbliness or not like not as smooth or not as clear. Right. But when I went back to sort of my, my tendency in practice is to, to have different places in space to focus on as well as um, different places of my body I sort of focus on. And, and if I have those certain touch points to like as cues to remind me of like how far, how, where, 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 what the movement is or something like that, then, then it was more flowing and smoother. Yeah, I had a similar experience. Yes, and less, and less of the thinking about it or judging it or, yeah. It's like the observer comes in and it seems like the judging comes in faster. Also, when I was in the observer, it was um, time speeded up. It felt faster. And then when I was in focusing on the space and I put my attention on the space behind me, time slowed down. Yeah, it was a paradox because there was so much more information and yet the spaciousness just gave it lots of room for it to be there. Well, and, and that implies, of course, my, my personal belief, which is that the space has an intelligent self-organizing principle inherent in it. And of course, when I would say that to people in organizations in the US or Europe, I'd get the dog thing like, what? But when I said it to people in India, they'd be like, yeah, for sure. They knew exactly what I was pointing to, but. Americans, especially, you know, Silicon Valley, be like, what? <laughs> Space has an intelligent, self-organizing principle inherent in it? What do you mean? Any thoughts, Paul? Yeah, the, um, the first one, the separation, it seemed more like, um, I know I was gonna say snapshots, but there is movement, so maybe just a video. Whereas I have a friend that did um, long exposure photography of dancers. So it has all those sweeps of color. Oops, am I still coming through? Yes. <laughs> okay, all of a sudden it looked like you froze. So <laughs> uh, um, the sweeps of color in it. And so that's what it kind of felt like is like, it was more like these sweeps of energy flow of colors um, that were creating the movement rather than, you, I mean, cause in the photography you can't even really see much of the individuals it's all this sweeping color that you see nice sounds like tracers yeah i don't know if my experience those but <laughs> nice so uh, unification and there's you know the levels of unifying within ourselves so that at the most basic level, if you're a beginner um, or if you worked with beginners that like, let's say they're doing CoQ and they're holding, someone's holding your wrist and you, they're pulling your arm here and pushing there. So it's a basically a push-pull. Or Ikkyo is one of my favorites where they're pushing you here and pulling you back here. And so um, but that's to me like a split within our own movement in Ikkyo and how to unify ourselves so we're all going in one place. And the next level would be to unify with others. And then I think there's a third level, which is, can we unify? And, and this one's harder to talk about because it's bigger, can we unify with a sense of community, um, a sense of connection, something bigger. So if we're in a dojo, do we, can we have a sense that we're all connected in the dojo? which is hard to do when we're training with an individual and that person's attacking us. We often lose the room, the awareness of the room, if you get 
our awareness narrows? How do we keep big picture, the size of the room or the, even the dojo, and at the same time have attention to detail? So I don't know the answer to that. Um, I have my theories, of course, but I thought we could do the same movement and play with how do I keep at least as big as the room you're in, if not bigger, if you're in a house and you can kind of do that. Can you stay with that awareness and at the same time have attention to de detail? Like what does it take to be present in the moment with the detail. It's a little bit what Ula was talking about, about the painting, I think. Um, and at the same time, be present and aware of the whole room or the imagining a dojo, something bigger. So let's, let's ask yourself, how can I do that and play with it? And we'll do the same imaginary code of Aish just as a way to explore that. So do a couple more or just finish the one you're on. All right, let's check in. So I'm curious if if you were able to get a glimpse of what it's like to hold the big picture and have attention to detail. Um, and if you did, what was your technique? I mean, Ula, before you, I think you pointed to every now and then stepping back and looking at it and then going back in and doing it. There was a little bit of back and forth. Um, was something like that or did anything else come up that we, we were able to keep both? Um, this came back to kind of the thing I was talking about a few weeks ago about center of mass. And so, so there's my center, but then as soon as there's a connection, there's a center of the two. And then, so there was like, I kind of imagined it as a point in the center of the two. And then the exercise from leadership and body of turn the room. That's it's kind of like, oh, there's the center and the whole room is pivoting around that. That's how it came out. I like it. So the space is turning around a point. Yeah. And the point is now a combination of the two because there's a new center of mass of the combination. Cool. I like it. Well, what I, how I practice was I, I, I bowed into Osensei before each practice. And so I was bowing into um, our Aikido community, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. And, um, 
and, and, and it just really brought in an aliveness and um, moment by moment, you know, the way he's smiling here. It's just like every moment is um, a wonder <laughs> as things are evolving. And yet it's all contained in this commitment to Osensei's vision of nonviolence and peace on earth. So there was a, a, this beautiful holding and um, yeah. kindness and compassion for just staying in the practice kind of thing. Nice, very nice. Yeah. So that word community, um, I've been noticing sensei that um, having my, my posse, my allies is becoming much more tangible to me as a community that I live within. And that was vivid in this practice just now. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Yeah, I think it's you know important that we remember that we're connected to something, whatever we're connected to, um, that we're, that we're part of that whole. I mean, that's part of the unification. Because when if we get fall into isolation, then that can be um, difficult. And then to have these um, these beings who have experienced that and transmit it is <laughs> very supportive. Yeah. <laughs> like this is possible. <laughs> and say I, I had some thoughts of um, how easy it is for me to sort of connect with my space here, right? A very familiar space. And then I know if I, if I change the context, like if I go to the dojo, the same thing, right? I'm very, it's very, very familiar to me. But, you know, in each new space that I go into, then there's like, how does it, how much time does it take, right? And I think like you're saying about the Dalai Lama, right? Like he comes into an auditorium and there's 20,000 people in there and he's able to like, you can feel his presence through this whole space, right? Yes. And then I know as a speaker that, uh, that if I'm speaking at a venue, my mind always wants to go check out the space that I'm going to be speaking in just to get my head sort of wrapped up around like what's going on in there before everybody comes in there, you know, cause I'm going to, then I can more easily include them into that space with me. Right. Like, and then we're all together um, in that. And, uh, and, but if I'm, go if I go to a conference and I'm not speaking, it doesn't, I don't have that same need or that same, you know, I don't need to go check out the auditorium where the other speakers are speaking. Right. Uh -huh. It's just interesting sort of thoughts on, on, on space, on the bigger picture yep. and the layers of it. Right. Thank you. Very, very, very insightful. So I think um, if um, if it's possible to sort of pulse, and then we can might have glimpses where it all happens at once, where we have attention to detail and we're holding the big picture. Um, and I think that the pulsing for me is, is like to pulse out there and then be able to focus in, still having a sense of the presence around me, and then pulse out there and focus in because all life pulses, right? Life doesn't flatline, flatlining is not good, pulsing is good, and all life does that. So perhaps a way we can cultivate it is by that sense of pulsing to expansiveness and then clarity to detail and expansiveness and clarity to detail. And that it might start happening at once, and that could be a way that we could actually set ourselves up for it, for the experience to unfold. I think in terms of Aikido, it would be uh, a quicker pulsing than what you're referring to in terms of like your painting. You can take the time to step back and look and then 
go in and paint and step back. And I think in Aikido would be more just like a, well, it would depend too on the interaction with, with Uke, because Uke is, as TCA said it once, is the engine, like activates the, the dynamic, the whole nature of something coming at us. So that sense of being able to stay big and then focus on thinking a little bit about is randori. You know, we're in leadership body, we have this thing where we say yes and not now, yes and not now. And it's so that uke is coming and we greet uke yes, and then we take uke through and we greet uke. So there needs to be a focus for a moment, acknowledging uke, and then there needs to be something much bigger that we're allowing uke to go into. If that makes sense. So I think it'd just be interesting to kind of play with that um, in our lives, that sense of during the day, can I just really expand big picture and behind me and above me? And then maybe I have to attend to something and then expand again. Um, that might start to get us in the habit of inhabiting both dimensions, being comfortable in both dimensions. Because I think some people are naturally more comfortable in detail and some people are more comfortable hanging out in open space and details effort. Um, but I think the capacity to do both, I think Aikido could be a good venue to practice that, especially because we're in that um, challenging situation, low grade threat. Any other thoughts on um, unification, separateness, what happens? So I just, I'm, I'm always interested in the opposite. So what drives us to separateness? Just because sometimes if we can wake up and see ourselves doing it, we can make a choice. We realize, oh, I'm separating. Then I can choose to activate one of these practices toward more unification. So what, what are the kind of triggers that trigger us to separate, become other? Seems like pain and either physical pain or emotional pain to a certain point. Sometimes people feel have physical pain and then get more connected, but it's challenging. Yeah, that could be something that could make us feel separate from others or a situation like my pain i have pain and that's separate from the other They're, they seem to be having a good time but i'm in pain yeah that could be a piece and what else separates us from a sense of that we're in this together i think along those same lines um just the, the attachment to ego to who your who self is and having very more and more, I am this, I am this way, I am this personality, I am this type of person. Or even just from an Aikido point of view is that Uke is attacking me as opposed to Uke is attacking. Feeling like I'm being attacked is different than there is an attack just as a context setter. Yeah, I'm now, going through that right now. Uh, with my sister she's very angry at me oh. and so at first I felt myself you know like wanting to argue and then it was like this really has nothing to do with me you know she's angry about something that else and then I was able to actually feel more connection with her and let that wash over me and feel compassion rather than hooked in and ready to you know, fight back. That's a good one, Michelle, because when I get irritated with people's behavior, I separate from them. Like, I can't believe they're doing that. Yeah. And I, I lose the sense, hey, we're in this together. We're all, we're all struggling in some way. Yeah. And with family, that can get triggered really fast. <laughs> Indeed. So I was really, you know, it was like, oh, here's something to work with. You know, I'm so grateful to have practices to be able to <clears throat> help shift something so 
painful. They're our best training partners often, the people closest to us. <laughs> I was just thinking of something that just more kind of generic that anytime there's an interpretation of threat, there's a separation. Yeah. And it's the interpretation part of it is key. <laughs> yeah. And that's why Aikido is such a great practice because we're creating low grade threat so that we can practice with that. So, I mean, the idea is that we can practice relaxing, being open, being inclusive, being in flow, doing all of that. Um, yeah. So, um, this has been interesting. Thank you all for being. Um, and connected with it, should we get our bookends and do our mind body unification practice, mind body speech unification practice? Okay, so let's take our both hands out um, and let's do our beginning ritual where we, where we stir the cosmic soup and invite wisdom traditions from all times, all places, and all eons to come and support our intentions for good in the world. Lightning rod to heaven and bringing it into us. Oh. And now let's set up for our Bokan strikes with saying our intention out loud, taking the weight out of our feet, the weight out of our body, Inviting key to flow through us, thinking of it as stardust or starlight, flowing all the way out to a point way in the distance. And let's also invite all our IQ support system, our archetypes, wisdom, compassion, teachers, mentors to support us. Let's say our declaration together out loud, ready in. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance into the world. Send it out. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Send it out. I wish to bring joyful perseverance to the world. Cut. Cut again. And a kiai. Hi! Stand in it for a moment. Weightless body. Keep swirling around, flowing through us like starlight, stardust. Let's do it again. Ready and. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Send it out. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Send it out. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Cut. Cut again. And a kiai. Hi! Last round. Light in the body. Key flowing through us, inviting the archetypes, wisdom, and compassion, our teachers, mentors to flow through us and support our intention. Ready and. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. I wish to bring more joyful perseverance to the world. Cut. And again. And a kiai. Hi. Standing in it for a moment. See if you can sense all the key like starlight stardust flowing through us and around us. Let's put our book ends to the side. Going out. So as we end with our breathing, I've always found it's useful to ask myself a question. Um, for some people maybe not so much, but the question is, we do this, an internal question is, what if there was a little bit more unification? And just sort of see what comes up. That we're not looking for an answer. We're just sort of in a sense of wonder or inquiry. So as we ask that question, what if there was just a little bit more unification? And let's dip down and take a breath from the earth and bring it up, reaching for the heavens and opening.
And if there was a little more unification, Let's do two more. And let's just stand in there for a moment and radiate some positive key energy out to the world, around the globe. May all beings feel cared for, loved, and free from need and greed. And now a moment to appreciate our community, our friends and training partners, our teachers and mentors, O Sensei's vision, and our own hearts. And let's bow out. So thank you all for being here and for the discussion and your insights. And hopefully, you know, my hope is that these classes kind of inform a little bit how we are in the world, as well as it would help our physical Aikido um, doing, doing both. But I think uh, noticing when I'm not unified if I'm more aware of it, then I can invite myself. What would it be like if there was a little more unification? Um, and less separation. Separation brings so much suffering. So um, yeah, I will see you all hopefully next week. I'm still around and I, I'm at, um, at TAM at the end of the month. And Greg, you won't be there then, but hopefully you'll be in Italy. Hopefully. Mm. I know. <laughs> Lovely. Mm -hmm. Especially if there's not a lot of tourists. It's a wonderful place. So it's nice to see all of you. And um, nice to see you, Paul. I was wondering where you were. So good to see you there. Thanks for the email. I'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah. No worries. I just didn't know. Okay, well, lots of noble, awesome shininess to you all and joyful perseverance. Let's hang in there. Um, keep our positive energy up so that we can spread good into the world. Yeah. Thank you, Sensei. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good to see you all.